Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Today I'm going to be making a couple of marking knives similar to this traditional carving knife that I've been using. This type of marking or carving knife is great for laying out dados and rabbits. I use this quite a bit if I'm not doing dovetail work and I had some steel left over from some marking knives that I made last year and I thought this would be a good way to use it up. I'll be using 16th of an inch thick 01 tool steel for this build and I'll start by marking the length of the blades I want to make. Then I'll clamp the material up in a vise and cut it to length with a hacksaw. I'm going to be able to get two half inch blades out of this to make two knives, so I'll start by coloring everything in with a sharpie, taking my calipers and scribing a line straight down the center of the piece of metal, and then I'll clamp it up in my vise and use my hacksaw again to cut the piece in half. Next I'll use a large file to clean up any saw marks or unevenness left from my cut. The style of carving knife has a tang that's fitted to a saw kerf of a circular saw blade. So the first thing I had to do was find a saw blade that was roughly the same thickness as the material I'm using for the knife. And then I'm just tracing out the shape of the tang using the saw blade as a guide. For the side of the knife that's going to have the cutting edge on it, I'm marking out and scribing a line that's half the thickness of the material, and this will help me shape the blade or cutting edge later on. For the knife handles, I'm using two types of wood. One of them is going to be made out of curly maple, and the other one's going to be made out of a scrap piece of cherry that I had. Once I've cut both pieces to length over at the miter saw, I'll head to the bandsaw and cut both blanks to their rough width. Then using a pencil, I'll just roughly mark out the center line of each handle. To cut the kerfs into the handles, I'm using a job site saw with that small six and a quarter inch blade that I used to mark out the tang. To make this cut a little safer, I'm using this scrap piece of plywood and ripping down to make a zero clearance insert. I'll cut this board halfway down and then I'll clamp it to the top of the table saw. Next I'll use the knife blank to determine the height of the saw blade and to figure out how far in I need to make the cut. Once I figured that out, I'll mark it out on the scrap piece of plywood. Once I got everything set up properly, I'm ready to start cutting the kerfs into the knife handles. I'll use a push stick for this operation and I'll push the knife handle into the saw until I reach the layout line I created earlier. Then I'll turn the saw off and let it come to a complete stop before I try to remove the knife handle from the saw. Once I've cut the kerfs into the handles, I can turn my attention back to the knife blanks. I'll head over to the bench vise and hacks all out the rough shape of the tang. Once I have the bulk of the material removed with the hacksaw, I'll use this little bench sander that I have to refine the shape of the tang. Now I can test fit both knife blanks into the handles and make sure that they fit into the kerf just right. I'll also use the existing model carving knife to make sure that the length of the blade is going to be right. This would be the time that I'd want to shave off any material from the knife handle to make the blade longer if I had to. While I'm at the bench, I'll go ahead and trace out the shape of the tangs onto the knife handles. I'll reinsert the knife back into the handle and head over to the drill press. I need to drill two holes to accept brass pins. The pins combined with some epoxy will be what holds the knife to the handle. Now over at the bench vise, I'll use a file to start shaping the cutting edge of the knife. I'll start by filing in a notch where the blade's going to start. The blade doesn't start exactly where it comes out of the handle, there's a little bit of a finger guard there. So I'll start by creating that notch and then I'll file the recess down to where the uh, cutting edge is going to start. Once I've got that done, I'll set the piece up on my bench and start working on creating the bevels. I'll slowly file away at a shallow angle until I reach the scribe line that I created earlier in half the thickness of this material and then I'll flip the blade over and do the same thing to the other side. It may look a little slow and tedious to do this with a hand file, but I had a lot more control like this and the whole process only took me about five to ten minutes. Now that I have the bevels filed the way I want to, I can create the point on the tip of the blade with a belt sander. I do this last so that you can create a nice thin point, which is one of the attractive parts of using this type of carving knife for a layout knife or a marking knife in woodworking. 
Once I'm done with the belt sander, I'll clamp the blades up in the bench vise and use various grits of sandpaper up to 220 grit just to clean up the knife a little and get rid of any sharp edges. I'm not looking to make the blades perfect or sharp at this point, just to remove the big scratch marks and get the metal ready for the next process. The next thing to do is to harden the blade. I'm using map gas and a small torch set for this. Uh, last set of marking knives I used, I had to use a couple of propane torches and they just couldn't get it quite hot enough. The map gas seems to work a lot better. But I'll start by heating the cutting edges or the blades up to a red hot temperature and I'll use a magnet to make sure that it's non-magnetic and that's how I'll know that the, I'm at the right color or the right temperature. And then I'll quench the whole blade into some peanut oil to cool it off real fast. Next I'll do a quick test with a file to make sure the hardening process worked. In this case the file skates right over top of the metal and it doesn't dig in when trying to file against it. So I know that the blades are nice and hard. The hardening process leaves the blades pretty rough looking so I'll go back over them again with some sandpaper and clean everything down to bare metal. The next step of the heat treatment process is to soften the metal a little bit so that they are sharpenable and that they don't crack or break if they fall and hit the ground. Uh, to do this, I'll heat an oven up to 400 degrees, throw the blades in there for an hour and a half, and then let it cool down on its own. When the blades come out of the oven, they have a tan or a straw color to them, and that can be cleaned off pretty easy with some sandpaper. So I'll go back and I'll clean up the blades one more time with some sandpaper, making sure I get rid of all the scratches and all the tan coloring. Um, by now the blades should be in really good shape and this just takes a couple of seconds to get that stuff off. Now it's time to start rough shaping the handles. I originally made the blanks for these a little bit thick so it was easier to handle them during the build process, but now I can go back to the bandsaw and rip them down to the right thickness. Next I'll draw out the shape that I want on the side of the handle blank and then head back over to the bandsaw to cut it out. I made the handle on the maple knife a little bit wider than the others just to play around with the design a little bit and see if it's more comfortable. If not, it'll be easy to file it away later. Over at the workbench, I'll start refining the shape of the handle with a rasp. Most of the rough shaping of the handle will get done now. I'll pay better attention to the areas up next to where the metal blade gets installed. I want to get that shaped and cleaned up and as polished as I can now before I install the blade. It'll be a lot harder to do it with the blade sitting in my way. With most of the rough shaping done, I'll start cutting out the brass rod that's going to become the pins for the knives. I'll cut the pieces of brass rod oversized with a hacksaw and then I'll go over to the bench sander and bevel the edges and clean them up just to make it easier to install to the knife. Now it's time to start assembling the knife. I'll start by mixing up some two-part epoxy. I use some sawdust and mix it in with the epoxy to try to make it fill the gaps a little cleaner and make it look a little better, but I don't know that it made much of a difference. I'll apply some epoxy to the blade and then try to get as much smeared into the knife handle as I can. Then I can install the blade, apply some more epoxy to the brass pins, and get them installed as well. I let the epoxy set up overnight and then came back the next morning at the belt sander and ground away any of the excess uh, brass pins that were sticking out. And after the pins were ground flush, I headed over to the workbench to do some final shaping on the handles. I used 150 grit sandpaper to do most of the shaping and then finished everything up with some 220 grit. Now I'm ready to start applying the finish to these knives. I'm going to use some boiled linseed oil here and I'll put two coats on it. I'll let one coat set overnight and then apply the second coat the next morning. After the handles had time to dry, I took the knives over to the buffing wheel and just put a final polish on the blades. Next I headed over to the workbench, pulled out the diamond stones and started sharpening. The blades were pretty close to sharp at this point, so I was able to start sharpening on just a fine grit diamond stone. After just a couple minutes on the fine diamond stone, I was able to switch over to the extra fine diamond stone, take a few more passes, and get these things razor sharp. I've only been using diamond stones for a few months now, but I'm extremely impressed with how fast they cut and how good of an edge they leave. And the last step was to run the blades across a strop charge with some compound. And these things now are super sharp and polished and they look amazing. 
And that's it, these knives are finished. They look really good and they work really, really well. The O1 tool is still strong and they stay really sharp for a while. I've already used them on one project and they're great for laying out any kind of dado or rabbit. So I hope you guys liked the video and if you did, please give me a thumbs up. Please leave a comment and consider subscribing to the channel. I appreciate it and I'll see you guys in the next video.